I'm going to show you how to create this um, I'm not sure what to call it image construction kit tool like thing uh, where we can have these little elements on the screen and we can drag the elements in drag them around rotate them if we want um, and basically create our own composition uh, this is an idea that's inspired by one of my students um, so all credit to her but it's really um, the approach is really interesting because it shows you how you can easily make these visual um, uh, visual compositions with um, actually very little work at all so that's what I want to show you the main thing how this can work is because we use this framework called fabric.js and this is a javascript canvas library that basically makes um, a, something available that works like uh, a little bit like illustrator as you can see it has all these uh, elements that we can drag for our purposes we're just interested in being able to drag images like this one uh, but if as you can see you can drag any kind of shape around as well so that's what we're going to be using um, I have some images prepared uh, you will have to get some images yourself because I can't give you these uh, but basically transparent PNGs that are like 500 by 500 in this case pixels uh, max work best in this case the, res the um, sizes the don't always have to match they can be a bit different if we want but it works best if they're transparent and if you have these nice uh, if it's like a straight cut to these transparent borders here uh, that works best so uh, what do I need well I need um, some kind of folder to get started in so I'm going to open Visual Studio Code choose open folder and then on the desktop make a new folder and I'll call this image construction kit so I'll open that folder inside there and make a new index.html file that's going to be my main uh, page here let Emmet do its work by hitting an exclamation mark and then hitting enter and then here um, there's not much we can do right now so let's go to fabric and look at the tutorial to see how that's built up and we're going to skip most of it but this is the most important one so it's taking the canvas element uh, oh sorry this is the approach where we regularly use canvas this is what we want to make with fabric so we're going to use this code now the first thing that we need is to have a canvas element actually on screen so i'm going to make a canvas element here this sort of serves as my image my placeholder and i'm going to make it a little bit uh, big 800 by 600 and then the next thing that I'll need to do is add a script tag. The first script tag will go to fabric and I'll get that from um, from package if I can find it. Nope. Uh, it's, we sort of sometimes have to guess the name here. That looks okay. Is it the right library though? Yeah, it seems so. Um, although this one, Oh, this is the compressed version okay we can handle that so we're going to include that one I'll put a link in the description and then the other one is a JavaScript file that we'll make ourselves so I'll make a JavaScript folder and inside that folder call make a file called main.js um, and now I'm just going to print out hello just to make sure that this JavaScript thing is working um, so this is going to link to js main.js okay uh, and we probably also want some styling but I'll leave that for now okay so we can open up our live server I go to command palette here choose open with live server if it's not there I can just type live uh, right so I get an empty page that's sort of what I was expecting but I see here that it also says hello when I open the console uh, using inspect element so that means that our JavaScript is actually loading to make sure that we can see this canvas better I'm going to give it an inline style border of one pixel solid and like 999 just to have light uh, border around it so you can see where we can actually work now the trick with our library is to have our uh, library here to the side so we'll do it in a minute um, and for that we actually need a diff and we'll call this one library note that we choose a name the system doesn't do that for us um, and in the side of that library we're just going to include all our images so I have this uh, folder of images um, somewhere so in my image construction kit 
I'm going to copy out my images so I'll make a new folder called uh, images and then copy over all these uh, images that I have so these are the ones that I have right now and so what I want in my library is every time to have an image tag here so really simple just write image source equals images slash and then this is the link to the first image and that's all we need second one same thing images slash and the name of the image so basically a bunch of these uh, images that I want so I'll just quickly go through them um, That works. So what I see on my page now, if all goes well, is that these images appear here below the scene. So we probably need a little bit of layout to make this work. So I'll add a CSS file, make a folder called CSS, add a main.css file. And inside of that CSS, I'm just going to do the very minimal of styling that I need. So I'm going to um, basically want this canvas and this library to appear next to each other side by side. Uh, as I showed you in this example here. And to do that, I'm going to make a diff around these things. So I'm going to make a diff here with the class of wrapper. And then end that diff here. So inside of that diff is the canvas and then the library. And then, so that doesn't change anything as you can see here, it's still below each other. But now we can use Flexbox to make these two appear side by side. So here in the wrapper, I can say display flex. Um, and if all goes well, it should load. But as you can see, nothing's happening. So what I'm doing is first checking if um, the wrapper is actually there and seeing if the style sheet actually works. And as you can see, the style sheet is not loading. Uh, a good trick to find out if your style sheet is actually working is to have a body tag with a background of green, for example. So something that's super obvious. So in this case, nothing happening. So it's probably I haven't linked up this style sheet. And as you can see, I forgot it here. So I'm going to write link style sheet CSS main.css. Uh, now everything's super green and uh, this link actually works. So this can go away. Um, actually, here I'm just going to write margin zero. Um, so that's cool. But as you can see, the images all now appear like this. They're a bit way too big. So we still have some work to do. Um, and that's for the library element. So for the library, I also want display flex, but I want them to be in a column, so below each other vertically. Um, and as you can see, they're sort of stretchy, so that's not really good. Uh, I'm going to set the width of this element to 150 pixels. And for now, I'm just also going to add a little bigger background so you can actually see where that element is. So as you can see, this is the element. But the elements are themselves are stretching. So a good solution for that uh, is to have an image tag where the max width is 100%. That makes sure that our images are responsive. So they always respond to the size. So that's much better. Um, and now what also would be cool if I drag this, that this library would actually move together with the page. So here for the wrapper, um, this is where our canvas is and our library is. To make them appear a bit further apart, I'm going to use justified content space between so all the remaining space uh, then goes in between these elements so here basically cool so this is our basic setup of the things that we need um, one more thing that would be cool is to give our library a fixed height of like 600 pixels and then also because this is of course bigger than 600 pixels we're going to say overflow y is going to set to alto so that means that we have a scroll bar here so even if our library is really big, we can still see the canvas. We don't have to scroll the entire page. OK, cool. Now I'm going to get rid of this library background. But what I will do is for each image, actually set a background here. So I'm going to set a background of EEE um, so you know that these can be selected. And now they're right on top of each other. So I'm going to add a little bit of margin of 10 pixels like this. So now we should be able to quickly see where we can select these images. Cool. So that was it for our styling. Now let's go to our JavaScript. The first thing that we want to do is just to make sure that Fabric is working. So to do that, we're just going to go to our tutorial, and basically copy and paste this code. And what that should do is actually show us a little red 
rectangle that we can drag around the canvas. So let's see if that actually works. So right, so we see this red rectangle and immediately you get all these handles and things for free. So you can drag these rec rectangle around, you can move it, do all kinds of things with it. So this is really useful. This is what we get for free from Fabric. That's why it's so useful. So that's really cool because that's what we want to do with our images here. And it would be cool if we can drag and drop them. We're not going to do that in this video, but what I will do is if I click them, a new one will appear on screen. I'm going to show you how that works. Um, so I'll leave this rectangle here for now. But I will, what I will do is basically for each of these images is add an event listener. So every time I click one of these images, they should appear on the screen. And the way that I do that, just in plain JavaScript, is to look for something called document query selector all. So not just select one, but select all of the images that are inside of the library. So library image will select all of the images that are there. Now on that, it would be cool if we can ask, well, for each of that image, now add an event listener. Unfortunately, um, this doesn't really work. And the reason why is because JavaScript. <laughs> um, but um, so this will, uh, it actually does work now. Okay, cool. So it didn't used to before. So now we can do this, so it's cool. Um, so now for each of these elements, so each of these images, we can add an event listener. So we can listen for a click event. So this is what happens if we click on an image. And what happens is that we run a function. So that's this function. And here we can print like, uh, okay, you clicked um, L. So you clicked on that image basically. So now if I click this one, you see it, you clicked on this image. If I click this one, you see it clicked on this image. So this is already uh, very good because in Fabric, to actually use images, this is from the uh, documentation here. Um, there's a bunch of ways that we can use images. Actually, the tutorial is a bit better here. Um, here it says you can make an image using an image element, and this is exactly what we have, so this is really useful. Uh, and then also you can use image from URL. This is, uh, I tried both approaches, and I found that this one works better, so this is one that we're going for. Um, so how does that look? Well, it's going to go to fabric, then make an image object, note the uppercase Y here, and it's going to say, take that image from URL. And what's the URL? Well, we already have these images, right? These images have a URL, they have a source tag. The source tag is set here. So this is the URL of our image. So we can say for that element, that image, use the SRC tag. And note here that L, this is our image, right? So this could be, uh, we can also call this image if we want. Maybe it's even cooler if we actually do that. However, we're also going to use image later. So I'll, I'll leave it here, but note that this name we can choose ourselves. Okay, so we get a URL and now we have to make another function. So it's a bunch of functions inside of each other because it's Fabric will reload this image. So it will load this image again. So this function is basically when this image has loaded, then add it to the canvas. So that's it, it will appear immediate or instant, but Fabric takes a little bit of time to prepare it. So we'll need this function here. So this is our image. Now this image is not a regular image tag, it's a Fabric image. So it's an image that we can put on the canvas. Um, and we can do that here by just doing canvas or add image. Going back to our document, if we now click the image, we see that we actually add it here to the canvas. It's at position zero, zero, and as you can see, it's way too big. We can change all of these things. So we can say, well, the image scale is set to 0 0.2, and we can also do image.set, right, left 100, top 100. We can also do random values or whatever, um, but that's enough. So now we can click these, we can move these around, click another one, move that around, actually resize these, uh, change it, and another one, something like this. So that's, it works really well already. Of course, we can do multiple ones because the system doesn't really care that there's more than one. If you click this a bunch of times, then all of the images will appear on the same place. So we can play around with it. And now we have our own visual image construction kit that we can do. Um, one handy feature that I want to add uh, really quickly is to remove an image using the delete key. 
and the way that works is we're going to add an event listener on the window uh, so we're listening for all keys for key down event and we're going to write a function called on key down that function will appear here actually we'll do it in line so it will be easier um, like this and now we can uh, let's log that event so you can see which keys actually happen so every time I press a key now uh, so you see I press this key so we get the name of the image uh, name of the key and delete is called the key is called delete uh, and backspace is called backspace so one of those two would delete this thing so if e.key equals delete or e.key equals backspace not the uppercase then we're going to go to the canvas and remove the uh, what's called the active object so the one that we've selected if we haven't selected anything it's not going to delete anything uh, but that's enough to actually make these things delete let's get rid of this rectangle also um, here cool. and now we're done I think so we can create images we can use the backspace key or the delete key to delete images and we can add as many as we want to our canvas so that's our very first start in the next video i'll show you how you can actually go ahead and save this and have multiple people working on this kind of visual composition tool um, that's it see you in the next one